I'm trying to preach right here. Explain it to your neighbor. Now, it's too much going on here. George Washington, it looked impossible. But we're standing on soil. We're seated in a part of the American terrain where God did something impossible. And what he did in New Jersey, what he did in New Jersey changed the world. And it brought freedom when nobody thought it could. How about if we do it again? Are you ready? So now I'm going to finish with part two. And I better hurry because I only have two points left. But they have 45 sub points. So, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry. God's going to protect your lunch. <laughs> How many of you believe we got something more important going on in this room than lunch? The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 13, 5, that the Israel became hated in the eyes of the Philistines, and they sent an army that you couldn't number. It says it was uh, the, as much as the sand on the seashore in number. Meanwhile, Saul had just become king and made his first mistake. He was only in office less than a year before everything fell apart. No, I'm sorry, I just read a modern headline by mistake. <laughs> And the Bible tells us in verse 12 that he didn't wait. And he explained that he didn't wait for Saul, Samuel the prophet because the people had were gone. He had read the polls and he had looked at it and said, I can't wait. Now, therefore, the Philistines had already set up their system of attacking Israel by banning weapons. It says in verse 19 that the forges were closed and there were no swords in Israel because the blacksmiths had quit being blacksmiths. They were getting checks in the mail and said, it's easier for me to stay home <laughs> than to make swords. I, how are these things keep slipping into my bed? So now Israel has no weapon and a million men coming after him. That's where we are. I'm going to add one more thing, and please help me and be patient with me. I don't get to be here all the time. I haven't preached in a church since the month of May. I have been preaching solely through the, either online or in a tent. So I don't get to do this too often. How many of you don't mind if I keep going just now, do you? Don't, don't, get, don't get mad at me. In 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. It galvanized America. Right now, America is being bombed a different way, but it needs to be galvanized again. So in 1941, there's a problem because there's division, and it's a horrendous division. Franklin Delano Roosevelt won the presidency by attacking four men that had the power to help him. And he assassinated their character. One was Henry Ford. Another was Mr. Boeing, William Boeing. Uh, we had Henry J. Kaiser. And the worst of the four to attack was Pierre DuPont, who had built the Empire State Building and ran General Motors as well as DuPont. Well, these men had the factories, they had the steel, they had the wherewithal, they had the skills. And now FDR finds himself in a bind. He has to build the American war machine to save freedom. But it's too divided. So he, he called for a meeting and he met with these men and he made his case. And that case is the case I'm going to make right now. He looked at him and he said, 
why won't you help me? He said, because I'm protecting my family and my grandchildren, and we cannot interrupt our businesses in order to, to build these weapons. And he said, you will have no business. Some, somewhere, I wish I was a better preacher. I wish I, you know, I've, I've listened to preachers from back in the day before they got modernized and sissified. I listened to them, and they were mighty. They could thunder and roar in the pulpit, lightning. I wish I was one of those men. I really do. I wish I could stand here and look from heart to heart and tell you that FDR looked at those men and said, Hitler will not let Ford Motor Company exist. The Japanese imperialist army, will they're not going to allow it to exist. This is about your grandchildren. And I'm looking at you right now. This isn't even about you. It isn't even about if we get to have church. It's about the world that we're going to leave for our children. And I'm telling you that I'm looking at Satan and all of his minions, and I'm telling them, you are not going to have the United States of America. You are not going to get this country. You are not going to control us. You are not going to stop us. I want you to look me in the eye. I want you to look me in the eye. I'm going to tell you something. 1930s, the Germans did not listen to Dietrich Bonhoeffer. When he warned them of what Hitler was doing and his hatred for the Jews, they didn't listen. And they were lulled to sleep. When Mao Zedong and the People's Revolution began, they didn't listen. They didn't listen to his plans to eradicate and to, to kill in millions of numbers people that opposed. They called it a cultural cleansing. They didn't listen. The Russians in the early part of the 20th century didn't listen either. They said, we know that the czars have been horrendous. And they need to be deposed. But this thing that Lenin wants to give us in its place is just as insidious, if not worse. They didn't listen. Why didn't they listen when Mao stepped up and Hitler stepped up and this stepped up and Americans are not listening? We're not listening. But here's the difference. When those pilgrims landed in the United States of America and their soil hit this ground, they made a covenant with God. They said, this is not a normal land. This is not a normal country. We're going to preach the gospel, feed the poor, and stand with Israel. And you are going to know that we're making that covenant. That's why we won when we should have won. That's why we were spared when we shouldn't have been spared. And that's why that day in the Oval Office, four men looked at him, FDR, and said, we are going to build the American war machine. And you know what they did? No one in the world had ever seen anybody do this. Henry J. Kaiser found a way to build a battleship in one day. In the morning, it was metal. In the afternoon, it was standing there. He found out how to build them and fill them with ammunition, send up the, out the Golden Gate Bridge every day. Oh, Henry Ford wasn't to be outdone. He said, I'm going to build a B-25 bomber every hour. So he started building them one an hour. Oh, Pierre DuPont said, guess what I'm going to do? And he did it. 50 million hand grenades. 400,000 women went to the factories. Americans gave up everything, unified, galvanized. Look, it isn't bullets that we need. It isn't planes that we need. 
It isn't armaments, and it isn't the Germans, and it isn't the Japanese. It's an enemy inside of our own system. And the Americans, who have always risen up, are going to rise up again. They're going to rise up again.